Hello everybody, hope you're all well. Yes, it's here, part two of Exploring Me Dave Years Review 2021. <gasps> And before we get stuck into it, I just want to say that I'm going to be making this video a little bit quicker on some of the other explorers. Some of them may just have photographs in it and I won't be taking any footage off the channel. It's just to speed it up a little bit because there's a lot to go into the second part. And as I'm making this voiceover now, I'm at the beginning. So I don't know how long it's going to be myself, but we'll get through it as quick as I can. But I might just put some photos on some of the explorers instead of the footage. So the next explorer that we did was the Birkenhead Tunnels, the railway station, Birkenhead Town Railway Station. It was quite a good explorer and I've got some information, something to show you about this video at the end of the main video, the video that you're watching now. Before we went down to the station of the tunnels, we actually were looking for a World War II bunker under Bidston. We found two little tiny ones, this being one of them and the only one that we were able to get into. We also went up to the A8 battery that used to be up on Bidston Hill. We had a little look at that and then we headed down to the station. Well, this was a fun day out in Liverpool. I'll let this one speak for itself. They never told me though it was a slide. I couldn't see it was a slide because of the way my light was positioned. So I couldn't see in front of me. Lewis Kelman and Adam managed to get down a little tiny hole in the wall. I got spotted by everybody. It's cold, not What did you think of that place then? I'll be one still out. <laughs> I can't put that on the video. <laughs> Is it best to go down feet first or head first? Feet first. Feet first. Feet first. Yeah, feet first. <laughs> right. Go on. Go down there. Go down, Lewis. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Switch the lights on. Go on, you may as well take that. Right. Oh, it's a slide. You could have told me it was a three slide. Right. No wonder Kelman said go down feet first. <laughs> My God, look at the wheel. I've seen the wheels down here. Look at the old photos, look at that. The Queen. Yeah, this floor is not bloody, is it? The scaffolding is this, this, isn't it? It's so dark. I've to move back a bit. <laughs> yeah. Do you like your slide? Yes, I actually come back home. <laughs> I actually come back home. <laughs> I can't get through that little hole. Let me just show you this. <laughs> look, I'll have a laugh and look. I can't watch it. I can't wait for this video. I know. <laughs> I climbed back out. <laughs> And um, Hannah's just getting us, bit, getting us into trouble all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to head off for the next adventure. Hopefully next time we won't be climbing down. Slides. Here is everybody. Here you are soon. Cheers. What a day. Yes, the church in Wigan. We actually went to Manchester first to have a look at the markets, but I didn't fancy climbing down into the grid in the middle of the street, right outside the Arndale Centre. A and a council fella came up to us and asked us what he was doing. And when we told him, he just said, ah, right, said there's been a few people going down there lately. Turned around and walked off. I mean, Kelman just looked at each other, we couldn't believe it. But the church itself was all right. It stunk a little bit, but it was very impressive to see. I know, um, Cool Explorers, Chris had been up before us. And yeah, it was all right. It was just another good day out. Similar to a chair, so I was in Kings and St. Nathan. I think the story better than I think the utility bridge for the train station or the actual cattle bridge. Um, the wood doesn't look particularly old. It's so dark, but it doesn't matter really what type of torch you have down here, it's going to be dark. But 
once we get to where we're going, there'll be a bit more light. That's the one and only Optimus Prime. I finally got it. I didn't think I was going to get it because it became unwell with my legs, but never mind. I got it in the end. Adam was actually down here the day before on his own, scouting the place out for us. He's a very, very brave man. And after waiting for quite some time to get down to here, I finally seized my chance. I'm glad I did. This is one explorer I most certainly will never, ever forget. Yes, the vet's house. I'm not going to put any clips up for this one because there wasn't much to do this place, but it was an alright sort of explore, I suppose. Lewis actually climbed through the window on his own, didn't realise how bad the bricks were above his head, but this place just absolutely stunk of pigeon muck. It was really potent in here, and the only thing it really had in this place was a really nice fireplace as we went in. Yeah, but it wasn't a bad explore. It was a day out, and I'm glad we went up. The one and only Ridgely Asylum. What a place this was. This was actually a satellite asylum from years and years ago. But that main hallway with all that peel and paint coming off it and all the multicolours was just breathtaking. And on this day it was really, really hot. I'm walking around the inside of this because there was no moving, no movement of air and there was no air conditioning. It was boiling. And we spent a good six, seven hours up here. Me, Kelvin, and Lewis walking around. It was just fantastic. And it's such a shame to see it sitting in this condition. What can you do with it though? Nobody wants to take it on because of the sad history it's got. And obviously the money you'd have to put into this to get it up and running again would be absolutely enormous. But it was a fantastic building and I'm really made up we got it. Yeah, the one and only Everton Library, I was made up, me and Chris got into this. This was just such a cracking explore. With loads to see in it, with all the features to the left, and them tiles downstairs in the basement. It was just absolutely brilliant to walk around here for an hour. I just hope to do something with it, because it really needs to be saved. It's just a fantastic looking building inside and out. And of course, with it being Everton Library in Liverpool, the home city makes it an even better explore for me.
Grade 2 listed, built in 1896 by designer Thomas Shell Medine, Everton Library was one of the first public libraries in Liverpool. It remained open as a library till 1999 but saw further use as a community centre until its final closure in 2008. It stood empty ever since. There are plans to be furnished it into a community hub. I have actually seen the finished inside of this on the photographs and it looks absolutely stunning. Even the gargoyles and the details on the photographs are all there and it's all painted in white inside. It looks absolutely cracker. So I wish the new owners and the developers every success with this place as it is a fantastic building. Manchester, met Aaron, and then we went up to the Imperial War Museum to have a look around there. As you can see, there's some tanks, and we spent about, I think it was about an hour and a half in the museum before we went down to do an abandoned pub. The pub was alright, but the building next door must have been one of the most shakiest buildings I've ever been in. The floors weren't connected to the outside walls, and it was all getting held up on acros, and we didn't realise just how bad it was until we went downstairs into the basement and looked up, and we'd just been walking upstairs. So it was a really dangerous place and the, the, the walls on the outside of the building, you could see them buckling and it was certainly a very, very dangerous place to be walking around. Derby and Hartley building. I'm so glad I got this. I've been wanting to get this for so long. I've been down about four or five times scouting the place out. But we finally got in and me and Anna spent a good six hours walking around here. Them views and the stairs and the basement. It just had everything about it. And I also had the sense to take us down here when the England and Germany match was on because you knew Sir I'd be watching the match and it worked perfectly and it was just a great, great explore. Potassium chromate, I can't see what the others are for the bottles, I think we've got one there. It's a big one there, it says. Uh, poison, that's got poison in on that, mate, you just judged it. That one there's got poison in on it, look at that. No way. <laughs> I wonder what's in the white bottle, mate, that's nice. Nitric acid. Need 70 today. That one there's got Peruvian on it. The Peruvian rocks. Jesus, mate, you put the fear of God on me. Like <laughs> I said, everybody, I'm just going to take a photo. I'll come back and show you this again in a sec. The Derby and Hartley building 
It's very hard to find anything online on this place, probably because it was always used for the one thing. Built in 1901 onwards, it was the Engineering, Archaeology and Biology Department of Liverpool University until 2008, where they gradually moved out. I'm a little disappointed we got there after some of the classrooms and the features had gone but all the same made up to find the artifacts and other bits of bobs in the basements that you'll see in the video but wow what a place and good news it's currently under refurbishment Me and Aaron are going to uh, get a double clip on the bill. Ready? Go. Brilliant. <laughs> The abandoned building being kissed on in Everton. It was sad to see this upstairs. It was actually people living in it. They had power lines in some of the rooms. But it makes you think how they get upstairs to that top room because this building is really dangerous. As me and Chris got to the top floor, we see the booby trap that's what we put on the door. And then as we go in, there's a very strange, strong smell and all them flies knocking about and then a door in the corner with a blanket over it. So when we went in, we didn't know what we were going to find. But it was somebody's little house in there. And it actually got electricity in it as well. And you could tell by the way the room was, even though they were living rough, that they'd been there for some time. And they were trying to make an effort. There was a lot of Spanish knocking about on the walls, as you can see as well. So I'm guessing it was probably somebody from Spain that was living there. Yeah. 
The next explore, me, Highway Hannah, and exploring with Adam went up to Hollywell in Wales. We went up to have a look at the Abbey. Unfortunately, I've deleted all the footage from this one. This is one of the ones I had to take off my system because I was running out of room. But it was a really good explore. We went up to see some old mills afterwards. After the Abbey, we took up to the church a bit further up with the outside pool. Unfortunately, it was closed. And then we headed up to good old Lusty Poor House, which is under renovation. It was actually the very first time I'd used my, uh, my brand new Sony camera with the long range zoom on it which came in really handy for when we went up to Lusty because yeah, I did keep all of the video of Lusty, poor house and there it is. There's the cathedral. <laughs> yeah. There's the cathedral. Wow. Nothing like that. There's the, there's the new building, there's the other one. Wow. Yeah. Little tiny tiles. Yes, so happy with the camera. Yeah, you know, it's just people. Okay, Get him here, the dog barking. Probably the same dog that Adam bumps into when he jumps over the fence from the top. Come running back up the road shouting, there's a dog, there's a dog. So we had to make our great escape. Trying to get out of um, Lusty and the laughing. Trying to get out of this window was just hysterical. And it was just a really good day out. With two really good, decent urban explorers. It was brilliant. Calling an hour, mate. I'm going back upstairs. It's a floor. Come on, let's get the frig out of here. <laughs> I feel like I'm like villain. Lockie's gym. We went over to get Alan's camera, funny enough, and we were just walking down the street and we spotted it. And we managed to get in at the top of the, the back door was open also. I've had a comment as well on this one from somebody who used to go with this. The fella that you see in the photograph with all the muscles, that's actually the owner. His name was John. And of course this fell foul of the coronavirus, but there was lots to see in this place and it was a really good explore. And apparently Lockie's gym had been going for over 40 years. 
It is just not going to start going mental on mine, is it? And the pedal getting launched off. <laughs> it's not doing nothing, is it? Pacino, sorry. That's a car for that. Just the building we've just been on everybody. See, it's called Lockheed. Mm -hmm. Huh? Hello. Right, on to the next one. Well, this was a good day out. I started off down in uh, Sefton Park, where there's a caves down there, I think they call it Devil's Hole. And I had a little look around there, and then I went up to an abandoned building up by Josephine Butler on the corner of it. Kelman had been in and said to me that he wasn't much to this place, but I think he was pulling my leg to be honest, because the architecture of the ceilings in this place was just something else. It's such a shame to see it smashed to pieces like this. I think it was actually a youth centre of some sort at some point, but the architecture on the ceilings in this place was just stunning, and the outside of the building as well was also really nice to look at and it's a shame it's just sat there doing nothing it wouldn't take too much to do this place up at some point i think it's actually been part of josephine butler lunatic asylum which is at the back which we have done previously but it was just a brilliant brilliant place Then I headed down to Sudley House to do that. This is where George Holt used to live and his family. George Holt from the Holt Line, the shipping line in Liverpool. So it goes down to do this and what a fantastic place this is. The pictures on the walls are still in situ from when they were first put up. They've never ever been moved from that position. Of course the staff down here were also very very nice, the gents and security guards and they let me in and walk around and all that and they were very very forward and giving me information and, and talking to me and that and it is an absolute must, you've got to go down and see Sully House, it is really really nice and of course it's part of Liverpool Museums and when it being part of Liverpool Museums it's part of Liverpool history, you've got to go down and see it, it's fantastic. Now with this place and the one after it, which is the old Rome pub, which will be the one after this, I had no content um, on my system, 
no videos to put up for you. So if I had to come up with something, I had to create something. So I thought, right, I'll shoot down and I'll get this. I was actually gonna go up and do a big mansion, but unfortunately it's now been pulled down. I was gonna go up with somebody else and get it done. But I went round this place and I, was, I must have spent a good four hours up here walking around here and the buildings at the back as well. We had one of them when I was growing up, and my mum used to open it and say, See, Zeddy! <laughs> I'm not sure I believe them, but we always did keep up and go get out of this. When Lewis went up, he said he couldn't get into the bit on the side, and you really couldn't. It was it was sealed solid. It was really hard to get in. Me being me, I was determined to get into that side bit. And as you can see there, I used my head, and I thought, well, the only way I can do it is by going under the floorboards. This might be true. It's the other side of the wall. I don't know. I don't know how to do this. Oh, when I went down that gap there and went through the crawl space underneath and I came out, I actually popped my head out in between all the wobble and that's how I managed to get into the side bit. Here's a little gap thing here I put my head through before. That's a climbing up. Look at the architecture up there. Yes, the famous old road. I actually drunk in here a few times myself when I was younger when I used to go to the Paradox, which is the club a little bit further up. But I knew this place was open, I knew it was open for quite some time, but there's been a lot of people in here getting mugged and a lot of uh, drug criminality going on within the building. So I had to be really careful and time this absolutely perfectly. I'd been up about three times before, but I just didn't want a chance of going in on my own. This is the window I sat in a while back. Look at that window, I had a drink just there. Look at that, we'll keep it at five now. Now I actually put that video up five months ago, and it's like I said, five months ago, and it stood on 269 views, and over the last week it shot up to 2.1k. to the cellar in a bit just to give you another look with this place on. It's just a shame to be sitting there like this. This place has got a lot of history behind it, an old coach station, and apparently the owners have ju just given up with it. They just do not bother, and apparently they're living abroad now. Who's that? Really, let's go dead still. 
Brasil. Medida. There might actually also be plans now to pull this down and build a pensioners care home on the corner there which would be such a shame to see it go but inside it is absolutely trashed Hello everybody, I'm just still editing the video. I just want to show you something there. See that one there, the old Rome pub? Well, up until a week ago, that was sitting on 279 views. In one week, it went from that to 2.1k. It is very nearly turned out to be the most popular video of the year, but it's not quite there yet. Something else is, and I'll show you that at the end. Yeah, so there it is there, 2,102, in a week it's gone up from 269, and it has had 31 likes, brilliant. Very soon for the next one. Seven o'clock in the morning. I'm up. I am dressed. I am ready to go. Beating Lewis at Earl's Town. Half seven, and we are heading to Wales. Just here. We've got the ghost. There it is again. Hello. <laughs> oh, <that's gonna> be... <laughs> Hello. <laughs> These pants are no. Okay. How you doing? Oh, he's got his mask. <laughs> he's got his mask on. Look. <laughs> the next one we done, I took Lewis up to Baron Hill. This is actually the vlog before Baron Hill, and I took him around Bew Marvis as well for a bit of a walk, and he absolutely loved it up here. I do. It's just a great place. And you'll see Baron Hill on the end of these few clips now. <sighs> it's come up a big hill. Hey, the bus was full coming over here. <laughs> Lewis said to me, How to confuse an Englishman? He said, Stick him on a Welsh bus. This is weird. Well, do you want to go down here then? And that used to be the way in if you came in on foot. That was the original way in. That's actually grade one listed. Just sitting there. And that is your, your start of Baron Hill. Yeah, it's like Jurassic Park. Well, uh, I've shown you the, uh, the other bits and bobs. Oh, let me come in. And the ferns and that. That was the wall. The wall lining on the inside. Because when you come to Baron Hill, you come down into it. After we come through that little slide, you think. And this wall right round. All the way. Wow. You marvellous, down the reach. Um, just the best. <laughs> yeah, look at everybody queued up for the ferry. Let's get back over to Bangor, which is over there. Lewis is up there, just gone live. I don't think it's safe to footage from Baron Hill as well because, as I say, my computer was full. I think this is one of the ones I took off, but I'm going to go through the Kingston chips now and just see if I can try and find it. If not, I'll take some off the channel, just the, the montage in the middle. But I love this place. It's just great. I've been up here so many times. I've walked miles up here with bad legs and my walking stick on my own. It was, it's just brilliant. I just love it up here. Well, the NHS did say to remain active, so I don't think they quite meant walking miles and miles and miles. Be marvellous. Lewis is made up with the place. He just, he just, he can't believe it. Yet. I'm walking down into, walking down into the town, all the little houses and all the little cottages. I'll show you on the way back up. I got some footage for you. But... Maybe she just really bad for and just love her. What do you like so far, mate? That's can't use the right words because you're videoing. <laughs> like you said, you can't use them words because I'm videoing. Oh mate, look at that. <laughs> wow.
anyway. And it just sells all cars here stuff. Doesn't it? You always loved it in there, didn't you? Yeah, honestly, in there is a lot into cave. Looks not like me. What? Looks not like me. Do you want me to take a photo of you too? At all, eh? No, it's alright. I'm just taking a photo of that. No, no, it's alright. Jeez, thanks. No problem. Thank you. Yeah, it's alright. Yeah, it's alright. See, mate, the people here are just so lovely, right? I noticed that last time I come. I used to see you down the road. But this is going to take his three, maybe four hours to get it out. It's epic. We'll give it a go. I know it looks back as I've done it. Now, sadly, I've deleted the clips and the footage of Baron Hill when me and Lewis went up. So I'll take a little bit off the channel. But before that, here's a funny clip from Lewis and talking to the cows. Oh, it's okay, cows. It's okay. I'm not gonna hurt you. We like cows. <laughs> right, we are back at the bags, everybody. And I'm not gonna introduce you to Baron Hill. <sighs> Baron Hill was first built in 1618 by Sir Richard Bukeli. Reconstructed in 1776 by architect Samuel Wyatt into a neo palladian style mansion. Colonel Thomas Bukelly is said to have offered the house to King Charles for use as a court during the Civil War. The family moved out at the start of the First World War as the funds for maintaining the grounds and the property had dried up. The outbreak of the Second World War saw Polish soldiers move in after the government took it over to temporary accommodation. The Polish soldiers were not impressed with the mansion and its cold interior, so on one night they set a fire inside which quickly spread, causing a major fire. The soldiers were then given tents to sleep in within the grounds. The building has remained untouched ever since. You'll see Lewis and myself at the start of the pet graveyard, which we'll go down and we'll show you that a little bit more in the video. In this photograph, you can see King Edward VII with his family, including Princess Victoria. That's actually on the balcony, we actually walked past that bit in the video in a bit, and I'll show you exactly where that spot is. But it gives you a good idea of the standards that they lived in them days. And in this view, you can see the house before. It became the way it is today with the path and you can see the waterfall and the fountain in the middle of the path that's actually in the woods and you can actually see the building the way it's made out of a big square box you get them quite a lot in other buildings that you see today from that time period yeah me and Lewis did actually go to the gate houses a little bit further up but there wasn't much to record to be honest and it was private land this place is also meant to be guarded by vampires. Last time I came up, there was bats in the basement. We were one of the wine cellars, quite a few of them as well. So I'm guessing at some point they've been moved, as, as we all know, bats are protected. What a fantastic place this is, though. I mean, like, I, this is just one of my best. When I came up two years ago on my own, I walked around the F all day, and it just blew me away. Right, everybody, we're at it now, but we've got to be really quiet. There's just people down there. Do you want to see where it goes? It's nothing, isn't it? It's not 
我选一个。做不做粉吗？呢，他做不做粉？都可以啊，嘛。我带了炸你炸油，带了炸你 breaks。Oh yeah. Nice build. Now everybody, I'm at an RC OC station. This is what Lewis done a while back. Me and Nick just turned the car around. I've got to try and get through them freaking railings now. Right, this is belong to the RAS. This was an early warning station for Liverpool. It's pretty overgrown as well, isn't it? So, right, I'm just going to stop the video there, everybody, because I've got a, a few little things to say on this place. Right, this was an old RAC station, uh, a reconnaissance station for the German bombers coming into bomb Liverpool. Now, the thing is, at the back of this, where the house and the state is, there's another ROC station, a concrete building. Now, these tended to have big bunkers and big rooms, like a little underground city underground. Now. It's debatable whether it's still in operation because where the estate is, that all the houses at the front, they've all got CCTV cameras everywhere on them, right? Now, at the end of this, you'll see me telling you that the alarm went off uh, at the farm, at the, right at the very back, it was saying intruder alert, intruder alert. Why would the farm at the back of all the houses say being intruder alert when there's all sorts of cameras at the front, which made me think it was very, very sus. Not only that, but there was actually a fella looking at me from over the top of a hedge. He was actually keeping an eye on me, which was also very strange, but it just seems very odd because the way the estate itself laid out at the back of the house and the estate, you can see where the old walls have been when it's been the RAF place, but there's just cameras everywhere you look and there's kids play things in gardens and things like that. So why would the alarm <laughs> And the farm right at the very very back be going off and you can see the red you can see the the blue light going round on top of the um on top of the pole thingy why would you have an intruder there that far back when you've got all the cameras pointing at the road on the house i mean there's a lot of them and um, lewis has been up here as well and he had a walk around but he, he says they're all right the people up there you just ask a few questions but i just think this is a very very strange place maybe a bit like the area 51 place down south it's just very odd the way they've got all that security and the only thing that goes off is the intruder alarm coming from the farm at the back surely they wouldn't need that because if it was a secure site they've got all them cameras it just doesn't add up to me but anyway that's me also crank caverns is directly below this and crank caverns used to be used to store ammunition for the barracks that i'm at there now and down in south where area 51 is the uk area 51 which is still active there's actually caves you can go down with and it takes you down to big doors that leads into the underground system that's still operation now by the mod so it just makes me think is if it's possibly something like this and as lewis said is there another way into into this place from the inside of the crank there is rumors of another entrance and delf and um, where the dragon's eye is so it's it's all connected underground this place so i'm going to do a little bit more research in this and obviously there's no better person than aston lewis because lewis knows this place but we'll see what happens because lewis just said to me why don't you go down and audit it so i might do that uh, i might go down with lewis might even go down one night see what it is so anyway i've got to go because the alarm's going up over there right yeah we couldn't get in that one <laughs> just before i finished talking to you up there there's, there's like a uh, it looks like a porter cabin or something like oh, that. Yeah. And on the top of it, it's got a big aerial, big massive like CB aerial. Yeah. And then on top of a tower, like a white pole, there's a blue light going round like a police car light. And it starts oh, yeah. going round, going through there, through there. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I come off camera. Go on the car to me over there and let's go quick. Alright, hello everybody. What I'm going to do here now after that last one is the footage for the next videos I've deleted them all I'll show you now um, but I have got a lot of photos so what I'll do is I'll use the photos and put some music underneath because let me just show you I am up to there I've just put that one in there now right and um, that one's deleted the pub's deleted obviously I'm not going to put that up because it's a preview the abandoned storage bunkers the Lambert's Vlogs, that's an update, I'm not going to put that on. And then the Norwood Quarry, what I'll do, I'll put in the photographs for that. Because I have a lot of photographs for the Norwood one as well. So I'll just use the photographs because there's not, 
there's not any footage left from it. I deleted most of the footage, so all the footage to be honest. Um, so I'll just put in when this decides to come on. There you go. I'll just put in the photos that I've got here that I've saved on the editor of them explores, and I'll just put music in on them because there's no footage at all, and it'll speed them up a little bit as well because I've still got a lot more to go on. Um, yeah, so. I'll have a look at all the chips and that, and I can't find any any of the footage. I know we deleted them off anyway, but as you can see there, I've got all the Genova Quarry uh, photographs there. And I've also got the pub photographs further down, and that is the pub ones there. I've got them, but from the Western Camp one there, I haven't got any footage from that, so I'll. I'll just put photos in and put some nice music on the before it'll speed it up a little bit as well. I'm very, very, very nearly at the end. I'll show you very quickly. Let me edit that. So there is the review video part two. It is taking me hours and hours and hours. I mean, I've been up since six o'clock this morning working on this and I haven't stopped and it is now. 20 past 9 at night, so as you can see there, that is the end of the Isle of Sea station that me and my uncle Nick done, so from there I'll put in a few photos now and just speed it up a little bit and then I'll put more clips in because I have got other footage saved for the other ones that are a little bit further on. Yeah, so I'll put, the, I'll put the photographs in and some nice music underneath here for the rest because we're very near the end and obviously the end ones, you've seen them lately so be no point in me putting like big, big mad clips up and all that I haven't got a lot of clips left anyway but there's only the chips there I've been working on and it's been brutally hard I think next time I'll prepare myself a little bit better but let's keep going
And of course everything you see there, everybody, the Second World War AA battery, the abandoned pub, the abandoned underground storage bunkers, the vlog of Lambellus and the one and only Denorba Quarry, which I will never ever forget doing. That was just one of them things that you take to the grave with you. It is absolutely brilliant up there. And we have plans to go back in the summer and stay there overnight. Yes, as soon as I got back from Wales, I had eight hours in mind and then straight down to Birmingham to meet Matt, the Dark Ghost. Unfortunately, I've deleted all the clips, all, all the video footage of all these explorers, but I've got some photographs here. And I, I can go through a few things with you. It was really good, really tiring, because like I say, I'd only been back from Wales myself eight hours by the time I got down here. And uh, Great Bar Hall was just great, it's a shame it's being left like that. Then we went out to do some Mando Nautica in the night time, the little girl called up my name on it when I when I asked her to, which I don't do the ghost stuff, but that was very convincing because there was only me and him there, and it was crystal clear. Then we goes up to the Raven Hotel, it's a shame to see the smash the pieces like this. Two days after we were there, they had a major fire in it as well. But it was a really nice place to walk around, we couldn't get upstairs, we didn't have to, but in the end it was too rotten. But some really nice features knocking about like that there. And me and Matt spent a good two hours walking around this place, it was really good. All the asbestos there, the glass mirrors still on the wall and that. But the floors upstairs were just not good at all, it wouldn't have been worth going upstairs. But look at that room and that ceiling. And the big long hallway with all the wood. We moved up to the Royalty Theatre. When we got here, we came up from the hotel. I got up the car, if you can see on the video, when I started recording, you could see I was absolutely shattered. I was physically drained. And this place has had a major fire. And it's a shame it's being left the way it is. They are actually plans to reopen it as a community hub. But whether they'll get it, I don't know. You can see in that corner there with the round. Decor is on the thing, you can see where it used to be. there again and that was a really good place to walk around as well the royalty theatre and that was the end of the Birmingham Explorers and I was absolutely shattered when I got home I must have slept for about two days I was just physically tired but it was well worth it Then only a few days after Birmingham, Matt came up to stay in mine overnight. Me, Matt, Lewis, Exploring History UK, went up to have a look at St Joseph's in Preston. What a spooky place this was, walking around here. Upstairs on the top floor where the nuns used to live, up until about the 90s. The hairs on the back of my neck, and I walked through there four times on my own. But this was a really good place to walk around, especially at night time. A very, very spooky and eerie place to be. George Formby actually died here. Um, in the 60s, I think it was. But as you can see also there, there were some lovely features knocking about, and you can see our way in and out, which was also very dicey, and that big light where the operating tables used to be. And after that we went up to the artist's house the next day, me and Matt. I don't want to put the artist's house in again for you because it's already been in the video. I don't want you watching the same thing twice. Then Matt went back home. And that was a marathon sprint of Wales, Birmingham and then Matt coming up to do two up here. I'd love to do it again, something like that, it was brilliant. Yes, the random building that I spotted in Chester, there wasn't much to do with this place really. It used to be an old tile place, floor, uh, floor place and tile place. But it was definitely a great tourist building. You could see where the architecture in the hallway. That's probably why it was still standing. Yeah, but it was alright, there wasn't much to it. The next one that we done was brilliant, it was a really good day out, we went up to Ram's Bottom paper, uh, paper Mill. We spent about half an hour up there walking around, me and my Uncle Nick, and exploring with Adam.
We actually went up to the, the manor, also after we got caught by a very nice security lady, she was really nice, and she let us go round the back. So off we went, and when we got round the back, we found a little tiny house round there, so we had a little mood around that. There was Jaguar cars everywhere we went, and as you can see there, I went downstairs into the basement, and I had like little cellars with seats on the end of them. But it was a really, really good explore and a really, really good day out. So later on that night, me and Anna went up to do the asbestos factory. Now, we had a lot of people giving us grief under, up, over this, but people just weren't reading and listening to what we were saying. There was all sorts of other businesses in this building we're in here now. After, it was an asbestos place. One of them was a fruit and veg wholesalers. I mean, you can see the graffiti on the walls. It's only the other one, the big part of it, that it would be an absolute no-go for obvious reasons. But I was made up we got this anyway. Um, after walking around, I actually cracked my rib coming out. Found out a few days later off the doctor, but I, it was a really good explore. And again, being out with Aaron, we always seem to get the big ones. Me and Aaron, Optimus Prime, this, the Derby and Hartley Buildings in Liverpool, and it's always good to go out with Aaron. Yes, so we abandoned a special factor that me and Aaron done. We got loads of grief for that. Just really nasty comments off people. Just the lovers and the haters. We get, we get this, but never mind. The next one I would have gone up and done would have been Houghton Castle. It was alright. This is where um, two pints of lard and a pack of the kiss was shot. Part of it. But yeah, it was a good little flying visit. Then the next one would have been Westwood Mill. It was alright going up here. It was a day out on my own. I haven't been out for a while. So it was good to get up there and do that and I knew he had the place to myself as well and yeah I enjoyed putting that one together and of course when I left the mill I was going to get the bus into Huddersfield and I came across one of my pins in just on the outside of town I managed to get in that there wasn't much to it though and I couldn't get in that other building the um, the way in was a little bit sketchy climbing up that wood it was all full of moss I didn't want to take the chance but it was all right the next one Olive Mount building for yeah I finally got the last building of Olive Mount which I'm absolutely chuffed a bit over because I've managed to get all the buildings up there now, including the main big one. So, I'm absolutely over the moon with that. And of course, the very last one, video of 2021, was the lovely abandoned St. Thomas's, which was just great. I love doing this place. It was, again, I knew I had the place to myself. I was in there for a bit. I could take my time. But then windows were just lovely. Just left like that. But what a church. Some size as well, I tell you. And yeah, it's just a shame to see it like that. But that was the last video of 2021 i did put some previews up but obviously i'm not going to put the previews up so there you go 2021 what an amazing year we had so much laughs along the way and uh, some of the places we did have been amazing being out with the crew and members of the team and that and doing some of the stuff that i've done on my own but also great to know the quarry just blew me away it's just absolutely brilliant up there and i'm definitely going back because i've got to get that top set i've got to get up them stairs them stairs were just so frightening and one of them moments where your legs just go like jelly but I planned that for ages and then the virus kicked in and I couldn't go but that took a lot of planning that that's actually a production that, that I've done on my own the three to four videos three or four videos there I think but that was that was just something else to know the quality this year I have got plans for being out the country I've got a chocolate mentally that I'm thinking of in the air but I've got to go down to Millwall for that. I do some shooting down there. I've only got to go down there for about two minutes a clip. But I'm thinking about doing a documentary on something that is relevant to Liverpool and the history of it, the maritime side of things. So I've got that going on my mind. I might be doing that sometime in the summer. So I'm here, how long I'm going to do with that. But I've got lots of, lots of places to go, travelling wise as well. The Wales ones I've just done, I've only started work on them. I've just done a montage and the intro for the first one. I can't tell you what it is because I don't want to ruin it for you, but when me and my uncle Nick were on the way back out, he showed me the history of it. And my heart dropped because I didn't realise what I'd been walking around. They, they, they have knocked part of it down at the back. But when you find out what it is, and the little hole, the little thingies in the, in the wall, the arches in the wall, when I walked through one of them, and then we found out what it is that used to get put in there. So, very, very early uh, thingy stuff, yeah. But, 
there'll be up. I'm gonna try and put the man, the man a video up for Saturday night for you. I'm gonna try and get that box off now. And get that off, and then the other two will come afterwards. But they're just brilliant to watch, and it's new footage as well. So I don't mind editing, editing it, you know, because it's. I haven't got nothing new up since the church, since Thomas's church. So it'll be great to get started to get editing. I can't wait to get stuck into it. So stay safe. Thanks for watching this. Thanks for watching the first one. Hope you've enjoyed it. We're not done yet. We're going to keep going. We've got another whole year in front of us. With plenty to come. I can't wait. I hope you can't wait. And I will see you all again very, very soon for the Wales ones, which I can't wait to get <laughs> to put together. So stay safe. Take it easy. If you're new to the channel, all them videos are. Up on the channel if you want to go over and see something that you like go over and watch it if you want there's some really good stuff there the Everton Live you want and all that sort of stuff if you're from Liverpool there's loads in Liverpool go over and check it out hit the subscribe button and the notification bell as well you get more content if you're new to the channel that's the little bell give that a click uh, as soon as I put a video up you'll get a notification so you have to go up stay safe take it easy and I will see you all for the Wales ones which I'm going to go up now start looking at the footage because just can't wait to put these together and I will see you all very very soon thanks for watching